Okay, so today I'm talking about this Fender FV3. It's a semi-acoustic electric violin. And I've enjoyed it for the last three years. I've never seen a reason to get a different model or make or anything like that. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to play. Uh, what I thought I'd do today is just give a little review of it, some pros and cons to owning this particular violin. The body is flame maple, the back sides and tops flame maple wood. And um, it's got this beautiful pearl inlay over here. The fingerboard is ebony. And unlike most electric violins, it's got a passive pickup, a piezo pickup sitting right here under the bridge. So uh, you don't actually have to put a battery in for it to be amplified. It's, um, it's got a hollow space inside, which gives you, a, you know, in my opinion, a slightly more, um, a slightly cleaner sound, a little less, a little less buzzy than some of the other violins that I've played on. Um, probably owing to the fact that it is an acoustic sound that's being, that's being amplified. This is a great instrument in terms of value for money. You're going to retail this currently at about under $600. That includes the violin that comes with four fine tuners, uh, as well as chin rest, shoulder rest, and this genuine horsehair bow, which has got a hexagonal shape and a little pearl inlay there by the looks of it. Um, nothing wrong with that. And this is the violin case that it comes with. It's got a lovely wide open uh, zip section on top over here. It's pretty cool. Uh, what we've got here, this is the coolest thing. It's a hygrometer. This measures humidity. And it's got a little optimal range meter over there, which tells you exactly um, where you should be playing. It gives you a reading of, of uh, when you're outside of the optimal range of humidity. It's got space for four bows, as well as this uh, dry tube for keeping your strings in. Um, the strings that came with it weren't, weren't optimal. I would recommend changing them out as soon as you can. I'm using uh, a brand called Warshall, the Warshall Carniol strings over there. I got them online uh, for about $50. So also not bad for a full set. Um, lovely, bright, bright quality of tone. But your strings are obviously up to you. And then a little shaker case over there for whatever you want to put in it. Very solid, little keyhole lock. Nothing wrong with the case. So, uh, in terms of the pros and cons of this particular instrument, what I mentioned already was that it's got a hollow body, which I find to be quite a massive, massive pro. For, for some reason, it just feels right playing on an instrument that isn't just a shell. <laughs> and uh, it does contribute slightly, as I mentioned. It takes out a little bit of the buzz. I think it gives a... That to, that what I just played there is, these two knobs over here are your volume and your tone knob. Let me demonstrate the same kind of noodling around with the tone on the minimum setting. So this is going to sound a lot more muddy. Cool. So it gives you an idea of the difference in the sound. Another pro would be not having to change out the battery all the time. There's no battery. It's a passive pickup. So you wouldn't have to spend money on those little square batteries. Just keep it going like it is. On to the cons. Uh, the most negative thing about this instrument is the weight. Everybody says so. Some people say they don't mind playing with it. I think like me, they've probably gotten conditioned to playing with it. Um, I've been playing this quite a lot recently. and um, I find that, you know, like with the violin, your body sort of takes on the shape of the instrument. So if you play it enough, you will get used to it. But that transition over from your much lighter acoustic violin uh, over to this is going to be a little bit of relearning. In the same way that you might have to relearn how to play the electric guitar after going, you know, after learning how to play the acoustic guitar. Uh, it's no more or less difficult, but you will definitely have to um, work on how to redistribute some of the weight. What I do is I use a lot, I, I use the weight of my head. Uh, quite a lot to just keep the violin in place and then keep the freedom of movement in the left hand. Yeah, so it's a little bit heavy. It's you know on the on the on the downside. Um, 
The other negative comment that I see a lot and I can confirm is true, this shoulder rest which comes with the device, with the instrument, just falls out. When you originally get it, it's a bit more bent inwards. So these things were kind of more at an inward angle like that, these two clips, and that kept it in. You just kind of slide it in and the friction of it keeps it in. But unfortunately over time it straightens out and you know, it's just, if, you, if you're not holding it like this, it's going to drop out. Or if you lift your instrument up, it's going to drop out. I've gotten around this by using just some blue tacks and press stick. Uh, and that just keeps it in when I take it off and pack it away. Um, then uh, it's no problem, it just sticks on. So I've never had a problem with that live or during practice, as long as you just put a bit of press stick there. Um, I, would, I would say use, use your own uh, violin shoulder rest, but unfortunately there's no lip around the outside. So you, uh, you actually don't have the option of clipping on. I've tried it with my, with my acoustic violin rest and it just doesn't work. So you're kind of stuck with this. So but besides the heavy weight and besides the shoulder rest that falls out, I mean, it's a, it's a superb instrument. It's value for money, that's for sure. Um, I've enjoyed, like I said, playing it for the last three years. And, you know, when you're on stage, you don't need feedback. So, you know, getting around that problem, I think this is pretty much the closest you're going to get. It's the closest thing we've on the market, I, I think, to a completely acoustic electric violin, if that makes sense. Jack is on the side over here. Just a little hint, use a lightweight cable just to minimize the amount of drag um, or pulling down. If you've got one, if you've got a wireless clip, even better. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, fantastic value for money. I'm just going to noodle around a bit more here. That's it. This is the Fender F. Fender F <laughs> this is the Fender FV3. Uh, it's a semi-acoustic electric violin. I've been playing it for about three years. If you want uh, any more information on it, you can get in touch with me, or you know, feel, feel free to check out my blog. I do a lot of um, uh, kind of tutorials, and I do samples and downloads and tracks and updates, and a lot of inspirational stuff. To uh, um, I like to encourage people in my situation, adult amateurs. I've only been playing this for the last five years. I uh, took lessons as a kid, but then stopped for 12 years, wisely, and uh, started again when I was about 28. So, yeah, I just want to encourage you, if, you, if you're back on the comeback trail, just keep on, keep on going, keep on practicing. Don't let anyone stand in your way, don't let anything get in your way. Uh, <laughs> just find your passion. Cool, that's it for me.